Welcome to our Subaru engine build series presented by Valvoline. Today we're going to show you how to tear down the engine. If you guys have watched any of our other Subaru content, then you'll recognize Nam. He's the master technician here at NB Auto. They specialize in Subarus. He's built a lot of these motors. He's torn down a lot of these motors too. A lot. Yes. Too many to count. They, uh, we might just use the word right now, Ringland. So <laughs> this is our EJ20. It is a JDM motor that Pete picked up very inexpensively. We know that it has some problems and we're about to find out through Nam's expertise what those problems are. Um, so you were telling us earlier that this EJ turbo motor is pretty much the same as any of the any of the turbocharged dual overhead cams. Pretty much the same even some to the older EJ uh, turbocharged engines. So even up to the newer ones now, they're pretty much all the same uh, mechanically. So just a couple of details, you know, difference from this to a USDM engine, but other than that, they're pretty much all the same. So if you have a 2.5 liter motor, this rebuild series will help you guys with that as well as any of you two liter guys. All right, Nam, where do we start? Oh, we're gonna start off by tearing the intake man foot off and then maybe the, in, uh, the timing cover and then we'll take the heads off and we'll strip it down to the block and tear that all apart. Okay, first step we're gonna do is we're gonna take the intake man foot off. So what we have to do is disconnect all the electrical connectors. You gotta be very careful. Some of these, especially in the GDM engines, they get very brittle with the wire and the connector. So you just gotta make sure you know how to properly disconnect everything. For example, this one's got a broken connector because somebody's already attempted to take it off. So the big difference between this and the USDM engine is this is drive by cable. Uh, the majority of the engines coming out of Japan are drive by cable, whereas the USDM engines are drive by wire. So now that all the hoses are disconnected and all the electro connectors have been disconnected off the intake manifold, we're going to go and take off the bolts for the intake manifold. Using a magnet, we'll pull out all the intake manifold bolts. And then we'll take the intake manifold off, just put it on the bench. Look at that, so did we do a good thing by going for a two liter versus a two five? Yes, uh, these are, we find they're more reliable than the two five. The actual block itself is much thicker uh, in the water jackets than the two five is. So can these take more boost or rev higher? Like are there- These could take more boost, more abuse. Uh, we find that they're much better for, you know, track use or even everyday use. Uh, and you don't have the fear of the Ringland issues like the USDM 25s do. Nice, and since we want to make some serious power with this motor, I think we maybe made a wise choice. Now we take off the, the AC belt punch here. Loosen the bolt for the crank pulley. Man, big butter, does that just wiggle off there? Wiggle it off there. See, I'm helpful after all. Now remove all the bolts for the timing cover. Remove the covers, and voila. So now we remove the timing guide at, at the crank pulley. That way we could access the marks for the crank sprocket to the oil pump. Why is that important then? So we're gonna set this now, uh, so we make sure that the valves don't hit as soon as you release the timing belt. I'll show you once we get the marks all lined up, this will get the pistons, all four pistons at the center of the block. So that way, if you do have any valves floating with the cams uh, being loaded, it doesn't make contact with the top of the pistons and possibly bend, bend the valve. valve. Oh, okay. Now using the factory bolt, you wanna put it back inside the crank. The 22 mil wrench, just line up the crank marks here on the crank sprocket to the mark on the oil pump. And then you could see that the marks on the cam sprockets all line up as well. They line up to the cover here. The dual marks line up close to each other. And the marks on this side, same thing on the right side of the engine. And at this time, we could start loosening off the bolts for the idlers.
Now with the idlers and the tensioners all off, you can remove the timing belt. All right, so now with the belt off, you can see that this side, the cam is not loaded at all. But this side, on the left side, the cam is loaded. So what we're gonna do is on the bottom, we're gonna slowly, with a 10 mil Allen key, just release the load off the cam. And now it's moving freely. And on this side, we need to remove the eight millimeter caps. And with your fingers out of the way, we'll take these off load. Now we're gonna remove the exhaust manifold. Now we'll tilt the engine to one side. Now removing the valve cover. Now we're gonna remove the uh, timing belt tensioner bracket in order to get the inner timing cover off. Now we need to remove the bolts that hold the sprocket onto the camshaft. This is the most stubborn thing on a Subaru and because there's so many different in cam sprockets throughout the years, uh, Subaru does make a tool to hold it in place in order for you to crack these bolts loose, but even sometimes I find that those don't work. Uh, luckily, if you can see here on the JDM engines, they do have a hex on these cam shafts, which will allow you to put a wrench on there to hold the cam while you crack it loose. On the USDMs though, they don't have that. so. You either have to get the proper tool to remove it, uh, which a lot of manufacturers do make the tools now, or there is another way that you can hold the can sprockets to crack them loose. God, he's lifting me off the ground. So now with Dave having a little bit more leverage with the pipe, <laughs> I'm gonna try again. Why not an impact gun now? Oh, there it goes. The problem with an impact gun, especially if it sees, is that you'll actually get in there and won't be enough torque to actually crack it loose and you'll just damage the bolt, okay. which then you'll have to either drill it out or you have to cut it out with a torch. Now that both of these bolts are loose, I'm just gonna pull them out like this. And as you can see that on the cam sprocket with the ABCS, that there's an actual hole inside and that's the oil relief hole for the ABCS whereas this side doesn't have the hole. And you can see that they are different lengths as well. On the USDM 2.5s, with the dual ABCS, you'll actually have four of these bolts on the engine. I'm just gonna slide these sprockets out. Now we can remove the inner timing cover bolt. Remove the cover. So now we're gonna remove all the components that are still attached to this left head, which is the pipe, the bolt for the pipe for the water pump, the dipstick, the ABCS oil feed line, the cam sensor, the ABCS solenoid, and the rear cam sensor. I'm just gonna pop the ABCS solenoid out. And a lot of times these things are pretty stubborn. They do have an O-ring in there that keeps the oil inside the head. You can see this O-ring's all destroyed. Now we're gonna crack the bolts loose for the cam caps. So what I like to do is I like to crack loose the ones in the center first. Then the back ones. Then the front cam caps. Once all the bolts are off, I like to take them off carefully. Set all the bolts aside, put the caps down. Just give it a bit of a tap to break the seal. And at this time we could remove the cam shafts. Now using a 12.14 millimeter you want to crack loose the head bolts in the reverse order of the installation, which means we're going to crack them loose going one, two, three, four, five, six. So now that they're all cracked loose, you can start zapping them off. 
So it's very important once you have these head bolts out that you don't lose any of these buckets or drop them by turning the engine. As you can see here, these buckets all have different sizes for the thickness for the lifters. So in order to keep the buckets all intact when we remove the head, what we want to do is we want to reinstall the camshafts. This is the moment of truth. Let's see what kind of a hot mess we've got under the head here. Are there going to be holes in the pistons? Are we going to have bent valves? Ooh, well, a lot of carbon buildup. Do you see anything scary in here? Uh, not yet, but once we pull the pistons out of the boards, then we'll have a better idea. But other than that, it looks pretty good. But remember, this is only two of the cylinders. That's true, you we got still got the more. other side to go. <laughs> Time for the second moment of truth, because this weird motor has two cylinder heads. Let's crack it open and see what we got inside here. Oh, yeah. Woo. Well, no holes in those pistons either, PT. That's a good sign. I may have spoken a little too soon. This cylinder head looks good, but this one, you found some we signs found of some seat damage. We found some of damage on the seat on the head over here. As you can see, we'll just pull the valve out here. And we'll just compare these two valve seats. You can see the difference between a good valve seat and a seat that's got damage on it. Yeah, big chunks missing out of that seat, which would always obviously cause a loss of compression. The good news is though that we're sending both of these heads off to Head Games Motorworks in New Jersey. The head man there, Dave Localio, is gonna do a pocket port on these and pull a, put a full GSC valve train in. And at the same time, he'll obviously be putting some valve seats in too. So now that the heads are all off, we're gonna take everything, all the components apart that's off the engine, that way we could split the block and get to the crankshaft and the rods. down to the bare short block? Yes we are. What's next before we can crack this thing open? So before we crack it open, we're just gonna loosen up all the bolts. It's a little bit easier to loosen them while it's on the stand than it is to fight it on the table. Okay. So I'm gonna crack everything loose. These plugs are to access the uh, wrist pin clips. Now we'll crack loose the case bolts. Kind of in the reverse order of the assembly. And now on both sides, there are 12.12 millimeter case bolts. One here, one here. A couple of them inside on this side, and more on this side. So now that it's all stripped down, and what do we get out of chisel? How do we crack this thing open? No, so right now there's still two more bolts to remove. One in the back here, and then one on the bottom of the block, right at the bottom here. So we have to remove these two first before we could split the case. So being how this is not like a regular V8 or a V6 or even like an inline four, these connecting rods uh, can't be, the fasteners for the connecting rods can't be loosened while they're in the engine. So unfortunately we have to take the, separate the pistons from the rods before we could even split the block. So, as I showed you earlier, in the front you have the two access panel, access panels that were removed. Now we have to take off the access pin on this side and on this side in order to get to the back piston wrist pins. Same as the front, you got another access plug here that needs to get removed. So now we'll rotate the crank so we get access to the wrist pin clips, as you can see there. And at this point, you get to both front clips and we'll remove them with the knee and nose plier. These clips will get replaced when you put new pistons in. So in order to remove the piston 
wrist pin. We're gonna have to punch it out from the back, which we can get to the access hole here. So in order to get the wrist pin out of the piston, we're gonna have to drive with a screwdriver through the access plug and push the wrist pin out the other side. So now that we've got the piston wrist pin out, we just have to do it for the other three cylinders to get them all out. It is officially time to split this puppy open. Is there any tricks to this or do you just start yanking on it? Uh, so we're gonna have to lay it on this side. And we're gonna have to just work the uh, this half off, okay. which uh, would require a lot of work on this one, especially being an older engine. Mm -hmm. Some of the newer ones is a little bit easier to split, but uh, just gonna have to apply some force on this to get it up, but without damaging the case half. Okay. There she goes. Woo! It's a strange concept, two piece engine block, but clearly it works. Is that it? Are we ready to go? What's That's left? it. If you want, we could pull this out. Pull the crank out. Oh man, bearings are flying. So what are you seeing here, Nam? Are the condition of the bearings and the crank looking okay? They don't look too bad. I mean, there's no bad scoring. No heat, you know, there's no, no like, purple. No heat, uh, or exactly. Like so they look pretty good, but we are replacing them with uh, better bearings anyways. Right. Uh, so I'll show you how to take these bearings out. You just gotta pull them off like that and they just slide right out. This is Dove from NV Auto. He's gonna be doing the actual engine building for us. So you've had a look at what you've seen so far. Do you think we have a good core to work with? Yeah, yeah, it looks good. We're gonna bore the cylinders out. They still have cross hatching in them, so it's not terrible. Okay. They haven't measured them yet, but physically they look, they look okay good. with the eye. So now that we know we've got a good core, what's the plan for the rebuild? Uh, we're gonna use our Time Attack Drift 2-2 stroker setup that okay. we've used in so many different cars. So JE Pistons, K1 Rods, K1 Crank, okay. the 95 mil stroker crank. And of course, Dave's gonna treat the heads like yeah. he does for us in all the race motors. So once we have all those parts together and the heads back from head games, we can put this thing together. That is a wrap on this EJ Turbo disassembly video. Very exciting about what's still to come. I wanna thank NV Auto for the time in helping with the disassembly. And by helping, I mean doing it all. Also wanna thank Valvoline for making this all possible. Make sure to go check out Team Valvoline, by the way, if you want some more technical content in your life, including some videos that Pete and I made. So go check those out. And be sure to go to speedacademy.shop if you need some go-fast parts or want some of our uh, merchandise. It's all there waiting for you. <laughs>